Guys, welcome to the I Love Seville show. It's Jerry Miller. It's good to be with you on a Tuesday. Thank you kindly for joining us. You know what we try to do with this program. We spotlight entrepreneurs and businessmen that undoubtedly are making Charlottesville and Central Virginia a better place. We are going to spotlight Guajiros, a Cuban restaurant, a Miami eatery of epic proportions. This restaurant I tried myself with my family. It is phenomenal. The Cuban sandwich is banging. I'm going to go out and say it, the best in Charlottesville, Virginia. And there are a number of Cuban sandwiches out there. Melissa Close Heart at Junction makes a really good Cuban sandwich. But these fellas, Harvey and Nilo, are making Cuban sandwiches that are undoubtedly authentic from Cuba. We're going to talk about their menu, breakfast and lunch. We're going to talk about the aspirations of how they're going to grow their empire in Charlottesville and make this restaurant not only successful, but tie it stronger to the Charlottesville and the Latin American community here in Central Virginia. Guys, when you see folks going in, whether they're Cubano, whether they're Latin, whether they're white, whether they're black, and they come in the restaurant and they leave with a smile, you know the food is good. And I saw it firsthand. Before we go to Nilo, we're going to thank some of the folks that make this program possible. First, Interstate Pest and Service Companies. We are their proud advertising agency of record. I'm going to tell you a little bit about them. Four generations strong business. Four generations here in Charlottesville in Central Virginia. Started with one truck and one man in 1969, and that was Mr. Wells. He literally would go to the first home and service his client, and then he would head to a pay phone in 1969, and he would call his second customer and say, may I come visit you now? Today, Interstate Pest and Service Companies is a commonwealth-wide business, entire Virginia. The office, the headquarters right around the corner from Bodo's Bagels, an office in Richmond, an office in the Shenandoah Valley, and nearly 100 employees on the roster. We love celebrating businesses like this, just like we love celebrating the good doctor, Scott Wagner of Scott Wagner Chiropractic and Sports Medicine. We are also their advertising agency of record. Dr. Wagner is changing people's lives through chiropractic care, through sports medicine, and through physical therapy. Who's got your back? Dr. Wagner's got your back. I have the easy job. I have to sit behind this microphone and be myself. The difficult job, ladies and gentlemen, is Harris Tolber, is Judah Wickhauer, it's Lauren Linsky and the team upstairs. They guys keep me on track and that is no easy task. On that note, Harris Tolber, my friend, my pal, mi amigo, I'd like for you to go to the studio cam. We're going to welcome Nilo to the show. Um, que pasa? How are you doing? Todo bien, todo bien. Thank you for having me. Our pleasure. Um, you, uh, we were totally impressed when we went and visited you. Uh, we were scouting the restaurant, and we were scouting the restaurant doing due diligence before inviting you on the show. Uh, we wanted to make sure that the food and the ambiance and the restaurant was up to speed and up to par. And, dude, you exceeded our expectations. Definitely. I mean, you crushed it. Mission uh, accomplished. <laughs> let's, you did, man. <laughs> let's start open-ended. The show is yours. Talk to us about the restaurant, the who, what, when, where, and why. All right. Um, so I guess, first of all, uh, my name is Danilo Mayorga, owner of Guajiros. Um, what can I say, man? Um, been in the restaurant business for over 10 years. Um, opened a little taco shop about four years ago in Miami with some friends. Shout out to Tacos and Tattoos. Um, recently split up uh, last August, took a month off, uh, went on a cross-country trip with my dog, visited 43 out of the 50 states, trying to figure out where the next project was going to be. Uh, my brother Harvey, uh, co-owner of uh, Guajitos, uh, been living here for uh, about two years, and he just called me up and said, hey, listen, um, well, he, uh, Charlottesville is missing something different, you know, something new, something exciting. So I came over, um, came up with the concept, and, you know, here we are today. Originally, it was going to be a food truck, but we uh, ran into um, the location that we're at right now first, so I uh, decided to go with that. We're having lunch at uh, Al Carbone and just happened to notice the, the location, you know, empty and up for grabs. So we just went ahead and, you know, went full in. Um, happy to be here, you know. Um, the concept, uh, we're calling it Miami Eatery. Uh, not really a concept that uh, exists down in Miami. It's just a made-up concept, but... Um, uh, as a Miami and, you know, been uh, living in Miami for over 14 years, we got to experience a little bit of everything. Miami is a very multicultural city. Uh, you can find Colombians, Venezuelans, Dominicans, Cubans, Puerto Ricans, you name it, they're there. And um, we want to bring all those cultures together into one concept, and that's how Guajitos came alive. Um, and that's about it, you know, just winging it, going for it, you know, just following your dreams. 
I love it. I love it. Cut that into a highlight reel, and we'll send it to the fellas. We already got people on the stream, man. Jay Wyatt, hello. Bellamy Brown, hello. Andre hello, Xavier, hello. Laura Jackson. You got people on your stream giving you props right now, and we'll we'll give a shout-out to them. Let's give some props right now, guys, to Catherine Ramirez Rodriguez, uh, Dora Velasquez. Thank you kindly for watching us. Uh, the restaurant feed is blowing up. Molly Nicaragua, thank you for watching Ooh, us. Lucy Molly. Montalvo is watching as well. Um, give the show a like. Give it a stream. Ray Cadell says, I just picked up lunch from this restaurant for the second time. It's <laughs> nice. excellent, it's different, and it's phenomenal for Charlottesville. It's great to have another opportunity on the north side of town for us to patronize. Thank you kindly for that perspective, Ray. How about, uh, let's talk about the dynamic with you and Harvey. You guys are co-owners of the restaurant. Co-owners, just us two. And our dad, you know, he helps us out uh, a lot. But uh, just uh, my brother and I just, you know, coming together. Um, we both have a passion for the industry. Uh, customer service is more like my strong side. He works more in the kitchen, but you know, together we uh, we make a great duo. You guys, guys certainly do. Um, I saw it when we visited you guys. Um, talk to us about some of the aspects you love. Like as soon as we got there, dude, yeah. you were greeting us with a smile. Definitely. You're like that. The positive energy was radiating, all radiating all off you. Definitely. I felt so welcome. And you said yes. something that really struck struck with me. It still, you know, stood with me. You said we want people to come in here and feel like this is a second extension of their home. Exactly, man. Mi casa, tu casa. You know, um, uh, that's what we're all about. That's how we were raised. You know. Uh, provide the best service possible, whether you are working or you're just at home. Whenever you visit our house, you know, we treat you the same way. We want to treat you the same way in our restaurant as if you were coming into our home. Um, you know, it's just uh, our background. Uh, parents raise us the right way, and uh, we wanted to provide and, you know, to educate people, you know, um, in a way of providing, you know, food. Uh, it's the best way to connect people together, you know? Everybody gets hungry, everybody's gotta eat, right? I love it. Yeah. Um, and the sizzle reel started with my question about home um, being their restaurant. It's gonna continue through this question, Harris. Um, the, the aspect of food with Cuban culture, they go hand in hand, love, conversation, food, making fee people feel at home, pleasant. Talk to us about that. All right, so um, Cuban uh, pretty much run Miami, so, um, you know, it's our main, uh, uh, I guess you can describe us as Cuban, even though we're not really Cuban, we're actually from Nicaragua, but, uh -huh. uh, you know, Miami uh, is pretty much ran by Cubans, so uh -huh. uh, moved to Miami when I was 16 and started, you know, ended in my, my growth, you know, uh, in Miami and uh -huh. with the Cuban infusion, so uh, they do well with the food, you know, uh, that's one thing they know how to cook, especially the pork. Uh, I don't know if you get to try the... the I did the not. Pork. We'll right, come back cool. for that. Definitely. Yeah, that's a must. That's a must. Uh, we take our time with the full pork, actually. Um, but yeah, you know, uh, just uh, all, not just the Cuban, but all the Latin influences uh, that taught us uh, what we can call now our, our you know, Guajiro's menu. Um, you know, it's just, uh, just a little influence of everything. Um, and like I say, you know, food brings people together, you know, um, what can I say? Um, I think you've said it well. That's the end of the second sizzle reel right there. You're getting a lot of props. Maria cool. is saying, I love tacos and tattoos. Woo. Shout out to Maria. <laughs> She's getting some props right there. <laughs> Catherine Ramirez Rodriguez, lovely Nilo, my warmest regards from Nicaragua. She's watching in Nicaragua respect, right now. Respect, respect. Yeah, congratulations. <laughs> we got folks watching in Nicaragua right now. That's amazing. Um, D uh, Dora gave some props already to Ralph Panda Vigo. Is that right? Yes, yes, my boy. He's giving you some props right now. Alexandra Maria is giving you props right now. Rodrigo Castillo, give me help right there. Yeah, is, Arevalo. is giving up, you bro, some bro. props right now. Jose Carlos <laughs> is giving you props. Give the nice, show, guys, nice, a man. like. Appreciate Give it a you guys. stream. Appreciate you all. Talk to me about when people like this, Nicaragua, people oh, in Florida man. are giving you props. How does that make you feel? Oh, man, amazing. It's a great feeling. Uh, coming from nothing, you know, this is a privately owned restaurant. This is everything that we uh, put into this. It's all out of pocket. It's all us. Uh, there's no higher power telling us what to do or giving us uh, the resources, you know, everything that we do is uh, creations, you know, coming from our heads or, you know, just coming together and putting ideas together. And uh, the fact that all our friends, you know, Rodrigo, Maria, everybody, you know, it's... Uh, Maria says she admires you. 
Oh man, I my you're back, Maria. <laughs> Dora says uh, Dora's giving you props right now. <laughs> that's from my Nicaragua. sister. Actually, that's my sister. It's amazing. Andre yeah, yeah. Xavier, who's Brazilian, he's an op- entrepreneur in town. He runs the Seville Hop on Tours. Nice. One of the co-owners. He says, "I cannot wait to try this restaurant." Come on over, man. We'll be happy to serve you. Joe Finazzo, one of the proprietors of Sal's Cafe Italia in the mall, is giving you props. Harrison Scott Wallace is giving you props. Richard nice. Romero, sup, kids? So glad for yes, you, baby. Yes, yes. Respect, I, I mean. I love love what's happening here um, and it seems like you and Harvey and your family have like this great sense of like camaraderie and it seems like um, your friends and your family are incredibly supportive can you Definitely. put in perspective what you meant of coming from nothing coming from nothing I mean um, Nicaragua you know uh, being a third world country you know we, we've, we've been at the top and we've been at the very bottom also so we've learned you know uh, the good and the hard ways of uh, of life if you know if you want to call it that uh, we know what it's like to have it all. We also know uh, we've been through some rough patches as a family overall, you know. And um, um, we know, we know, we we become uh, a lot, of, you know, we become humble, you know, uh, not having it all and not having it all and not having nothing. Uh, so uh, life itself has shown us the ways of 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 living, you know. And uh, we just want to transmit that energy to everybody. Uh, and along the road, you know, we've, we've met so many great people, everybody that's given us shout outs. Uh, that's people that we've known for years, you know, since we were elementary school or some. Um, and, you know, it's been, it's been great meeting all these people, uh, transmitting the love and, and the positive vibes wherever we go. I love that answer. Yeah. Um, what brought you to the United States? Um, so my dad uh, was diagnosed with cancer uh, and... Nicaragua not having a lot of resources. Uh, he had to uh, come to the States to get treatment. And um, they actually came. Uh, it was just my mom and my dad that came by themselves. And we all stayed back in Nicaragua uh, for about two years until they uh, had enough resources to bring the rest of the family in. And uh, that's how we got to Miami. Um, you know, it wasn't easy uh, coming from, you know, uh, being a decent, you know, middle class, a decent middle class family to, you know, being, I guess, lower class in Miami. Uh, we we went on in a two bedroom apartment. It was it's five of us. I actually have five siblings plus my mom and my dad. So it was seven of us living in a two bedroom apartment. So um, you know it was it wasn't easy at first, but uh, you know we we, f- we fought it through. And you know I love just it. Looking forward to to everything. You know positive attitude. That's how my dad raised us. So that's how that's how we are here today. I love it. So start another sizzle reel. Start with my question two questions ago about coming from nothing and this end it right there because that was amazing. I can relate. Mi mother is Cubana. I nice. mentioned that to you um, a few months before mi mima y mi papi y mi madre, before they left Cuba. Um, they left a few months before Castro took over. Um, they were at a middle, upper class life in Cuba, owned their home. Uh, Me and Poppy had great jobs. My mom was happy in school. And then one day, Poppy went to my mom and said, you can fit everything that you can carry in a backpack, and we're leaving at 2 in the morning, and we're going to go on this boat from Cuba and from Havana to Miami. Completely different world. Yeah. Left the home, left their bank accounts, left everything, went to Miami. Poppy became a ditch digger. Hmm. Mima was a hotel maid. My mom was put in an English-speaking school without being able to speak English. That was tough, She said people would go up to her and ridicule and make fun of her in this English-speaking school, and she couldn't understand them, but she knew that they were making fun of her. And to this day, when she brings this story up, she gets tears in her eyes. Um, and it like helped shape who she was and in turn definitely. it helped shape who my brother and I were because she was our mom and she raised us to be positive and tough as well. So I'm going to throw it to you. I can totally appreciate where you're coming from and yeah, it's man, how yeah. it's helped shape you as a man. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. It's uh, life experiences and you, they, they can either make you or break you. And, you know, thankfully our parents have uh, support us and guide us the right way through our lives. And, um, you know, we're happy to to have them as parents and and we appreciate them for teaching us and, you know, just appreciating life and everything that they've done for us. So and, you know, it's tough it without them. Yes. Because being an entrepreneur is no easy task. It's Harvey was saying yeah. he was getting to the restaurant at 4 a.m., right? Yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, that's, you know, that's 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 the business life, you know, the, the restaurant business. Uh, you know, we, we take our time with our food. We like to provide the, uh, the you know, as fresh uh, products as possible. So we go in really early and prepare everything so everything comes as fresh as possible. 
uh, like the pulled pork, it's marinated for five hours, slow cooked for 12. So, you know, uh, if it's 4 a.m. that we got to be up, then 4 a.m. it is, as long as we can provide some good service, some good food, some good vibes to the people of Charlottesville. I love it. I love it. Guys, I have personally tried the restaurant firsthand. It is phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Okay, I went there with my wife and my son. Two and a half of us ate for about 30 bucks and change. It was priced fairly. The food comes out quickly. The ambiance is welcoming. Perfect for kids and family. The food is on point. Okay, it is absolutely on point. John Updike, welcome to the show. Garrett Klingel, welcome to the show. Larry Rhodes, welcome to the show. Ian Glomsky of Vitae Spirits, welcome to the show. He's come on the show. Sarah Hill Buchensky and Crozet. Bob Shada, thank you for watching. Chris Turner in Richmond. Tim Ryan in Fluvanna. We have Rick Henderson watching in the city of Charlottesville. The show is fire, and it's blowing up right nice, now. Nice, Make Maria so happy, says, man. God bless you forever. <laughs> Luis, De is it De Niro? Says, bro, if you need a website, I got you. Okay, we I'll got folks up, man, sure. <laughs> watching in Nicaragua right now. Give it a like. Give it a share. Luis, thank you for sharing the program. Um, talk to us about the menu. Let's start first breakfast. Breakfast. Um, simple as it gets. We don't, we don't want to, you know, nothing out of this world, uh, nothing too fancy, uh, plain and simple. Um, and like I said, all the ideas coming from 14 years of living in Miami. Uh, Miami is the city that don't sleep, just like New York and any other big city. So uh, people are always on the move. People need something quick, something effective. Um, and that's how we came up with the breakfast menu. Um, starting with the pan con tortilla, it's our breakfast under $5, it's our breakfast special. Um, you get uh, two eggs on an omelet inside a, inside a Cuban bread with a small cafe con leche for under $5. Cannot go wrong with that, you know, breakfast in one hand, cafe con leche on the other, you're good to go. Um, came up with uh, the guajitos breakfast, uh, it's a little creation of my brother Harvey. Um, then we got um, uh, on the healthier side, we call it the breakfast, the South Beach breakfast, you know, on the healthier side, you get uh, egg whites, spinach, parfait, you know, keep it in, keep it in a little healthy, uh, avocado toast, you name it, you know, trying to keep it as simple, you know, but still provide, you know, breakfast for that, uh, for that early worm, you know. Um, but then we go to onto the, onto the lunch and that's where it gets good. Uh, sandwich is another thing. Uh, in Miami, there's this thing, this culture, I guess you can call it, you know, it's, um, there's ventanitas, which translates to little window. Uh, very popular in Miami. It's like little holes in the walls wherever you go. Uh, you just go over there before work, you know, you're, even if you're late to work, you go and you grab your coffee fix, you get your, your Cuban sandwich, you get your pan con bistec, you know, and uh, you're on the go. So uh, that's the idea we want to provide uh, people in Charlottesville, you know, something that's in Miami, it's something the, you know, a daily ritual for us, you know, uh, we wanted to educate people on how we Miamians do it over there, you know, uh, starting with the cafecito, your colada, I don't know, did you try the uh, cafe con leche? Yeah, dude. All right, cool. It was so, amazing. Good, good. It reminded me of Mima and Poppy's cafe con leche. Definitely, yeah. I mean, so. I swear to God, it was so authentic. It literally <laughs> made me nostalgic because uh, my grandparents raised me as my mom and dad were doing their business. Yeah. So Mima and Poppy raised us in Miami and Naples, my brother okay. and I, and all the time, they didn't have much money, and all the time it was like uh, cafe con leche, you know, toast with some butter. Yeah, I mean, with whatever, some butter, Cuban toast. Do. That's a good breakfast. Yeah, That's my daily great. breakfast, man. Right, yeah. <laughs> and, dude, it made me nostalgic of being nice, a kid. Nice, nice. So, yeah, um, there's not much to it, but, uh, uh, you know, it's something so simple that can go a long way, like you say, you know, uh, bring you back memories and... Uh, and that's how we Miami is doing, you know, uh, since we're always on the go, uh, a simple breakfast, a simple coffee and, uh, and a toast, a buttered toast uh, can go a long way, can get you, can get the day started, you know, so um, something that is so simple and easy to make, you know, uh, honestly, we didn't really think we were going to get this, this, this busy or this popular. So, so wait till the show know. is done. Oh, man. Yeah, I can't <laughs> wait. And but, you know, so, uh, we just we didn't really create anything uh, the, Cuban sandwiches have been, you know, been alive for years. Uh, steak sandwich, chicken sandwich, you know, nothing that we haven't seen before. We just, you know. Uh, Charles just, just hasn't really seen it. All right, cool. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, uh, in Miami, it's something so simple that if we would have opened this business in Miami, we just would have been another cafeteria, another hole in the wall. Uh, so, you know, we decided to bring it over here to educate people and to show people what... Uh, what Miami is really all about, you know, uh, well, real, what a real Miami goes through in a day, you know, this is 
uh, a must in Miami. Uh, nobody starts the day without their cafecito or their colada, which is a quadruple shot of espresso with some sugar. That's what um, I'm talking often about. Often meant to be shared, you know, between two, three people. Uh, okay. An ounce shot is all you need to get you started. Uh, actually, I take about two of those a day and, you know, a, two, a full colada, you know, but... Uh, I'm kind of used to it, so it doesn't have That's the what same I need, effect. dude. I'm drinking like oh, 160 yeah. ounces of coffee a day. Man, I need to switch. A colada, a colada will get you going, okay. man. A colada will do just right for a full day, you know? So, uh, you know, simplicity at its finest, you know? Uh, we're not, you know, we're not executive chefs nowhere, you know? Um, we just know some hospitality, you know, skills. Uh, and, you know, we just wanted to wing it, man. We just wanted to do our own thing. Um, and, and we're doing it, man. We're so excited to be here. I freaking love it. I <laughs> love it. Ian Glomsky, who is the owner of Vitae Spirits right here, his business, you got to try. The dis I'd say, was it the first distillery? I know there was another one that was close, but the first distillery in the city of Charlottesville, um, he says, hey, a new place to try. I didn't know about your restaurant until now. I cannot wait to try it. Ashley Cherix, thank you for watching. Roger Voyenze, thank you for watching. We're live on seven Facebook pages across the I Love Seaville network. You were blowing up right now. Catherine Rodriguez, what about the, uh, talk to me about here. Give me some, uh, Gallo Pinto. Uh, coming soon, coming soon, Catherine. Okay. Uh, we wanted to, uh, you know, um, like I said, it was just uh, my brother and I that started. I uh, have my friend Victor who uh, came along with me from Miami. Uh, shout out to Vic, you know. Um, and it was just he came from Miami to Charlottesville. Yeah, to work at your restaurant. Yes, sir. Dude, yes, that sir. is so bonafide. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 a strong friendship right there. So, totally, definitely. Yeah, talk to, to me about that. Oh man, you know, just uh, another wonder like us uh, trying to you know make something out of life. Uh, uh, he just, I just told him the idea. I needed, I said, I told him I needed some help, you know, uh, and he was right away. He was on board. Um, he actually opened, uh, he actually helped open uh, Tagos and Tattoos with us. He's part of that experience, uh, which I'm so grateful for. It was a, a great experience. You know, it's a little preview of what we're having right now. That's, um, that's why opening this, uh, it's just feel like second nature to me now because I've been through all of this, uh, well, a little, a little less since I didn't have to deal with like you know payroll and uh, none of that like upper management stuff. But uh, but still, we got that that first experience of opening something personal, something you know, for ourselves. And uh, yeah, he was just on board right away. He's like, "Well, Virginia, let's go, let's do it." So uh, he's he's here, and um, it was uh, Victor and my brother Harvey that started this. So we didn't really want to get too crowded, you know. It was just us two, so we're, you know. Um, it was it was too much to handle, so that's why we started with the with the small menu, uh, the basics. But you know, gallo pinto is a, a Nicaraguan dish, it's just rice and beans, you know, mixed together, and uh, we're gonna have that, you know, eventually now. Uh, uh, so we just started those three, but up until two weeks ago, we started hiring people. Now I have three cooks. I have a little more time to like step back and start creating a little more in the kitchen uh, and like run the business menus. instead of doing like exactly. super in the business. Definitely, yeah, yeah, which I still love to do and yeah. I, I will do, you know. Uh -huh. um, I love taking care of people. I love engaging. You're so good at it. Yeah, yeah. Seriously. Uh, definitely, yeah, yeah. Um, study. I was studying uh, sports medicine uh, at some point in life, but uh, then a tragic uh, happened. You know, I broke my toe in half, had two screws, lost my scholarship, and, you know, that was over in Chicago. So I went back to Miami. It's kind of a little lost in life. You know, soccer has been my life since I'm a little kid and lost my scholarship. I felt like I had failed in life. So you were a soccer player? Soccer player, yes, In sir. Chicago? In Chicago. I mean, I, 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 all my life in Miami and back in Nicaragua, I've always been a soccer player. But then I got a full ride to uh, Lincoln College in nice. Lincoln, Illinois, like about an hour and a half south of Chicago. Okay. Uh, I was there for a year and a half and, you know, things happened. Uh, got injured, uh, lost my scholarship. So I had to go back to Miami um, and went back to school, tried keep going with school, but um, um, I wasn't feeling it, man. I wasn't feeling it, and then, you know, um, I had to pay for my own my for my for own school, so I started. I decided to get a job, quickest job, and easiest job was just a server uh, at this restaurant, so I started working for 1500 Degrees under uh, Chef Adrian Grenier, which pretty much made me love, uh, made me fall in love with, with the industry. Uh, shout out to Chef Adrian if you're, if you're watching. Um, but you know, that was like my entrance to, uh, to the restaurant business and, and you know, uh, it all started from there. Then, you know, I started, it was actually a fine dining, so completely different level from where I'm at, but you know, I got to learn the, the right way, you know, of how food is handled and how the service is 
provided and all that. And I just found a passion for it, man. And I, three years later, I came uh, together with, with a couple of friends and we just, just decided to open Tacos and Tattoos. And, you know, great experience. I, it's been, it's been, you know, I don't even consider it a job. It's just been, I've just been living ever since, you know. I love and, it. And loving it. Loving when you it, make man. your passion your profession, Definitely, man. you're not working. You, you're not working, man. It's it's just a great feeling. It's, it just doesn't feel like you're working when you're enjoying it and you're having a great time. It's just a feeling that, you know, it's indescribable. You just got to go for it, you know. Just you're getting a ton of props. Abby Tenenbaum Guskin. Abby, I love you, man. She says, Danilo, your energy is contagious. <laughs> I just sign on, sign on where you're at. I love the show. I wish you well, mi amigo. Nice, nice. She's giving you props. Your page is blowing up, dude, <laughs> nice, right nice. now. Uh, Grace Mejia, welcome to the program. Jonathan Galasso, welcome to the program. Laura Foner, who's the executive chef at Dooner's Restaurant, is watching us right now. What's up, Laura? Uh, that is a sizzle reel, Abby Tenenbaum. Abby's leaving in the comments right now when to drop sizzle reels. I love that, Abby. Thank you kindly <laughs> yeah, for watching man. the show. Uh, let me throw this to you. Uh, Ant, uh, who is this right here? Ant? Oh, sorry. Boy, my boy, good. Milo. Um, Eric Back in the is high giving you days. some props. Huge shout out. You guys rock. Keep it going. Can't wait uh, for you guys. Guys, give the show a like. Yes. Give it a share. Harry Lynn, Let's welcome to the program. <laughs> Cecilia Rohde of Rapture Restaurant, welcome to the program. Thank you for watching. She's one of the owners of Rapture on the Mall. Nice. Um, I have to ask you this. Yes. Um, from Miami, from Chicago okay. to Miami. Yes. To Charlottesville. Yeah. Culture shock. Every single time, man. Yeah. Every single time. Talk to me and, about that. And uh, and loving it, man. You know, like I said, we're very humble people. We uh, appreciate where we are in the ambience, and if, uh, wherever we go, we try to you know spread out the love. Um, Chicago, completely different from Miami, uh, middle of the country, wind city. Uh, Did you like it? Uh, I loved it. I loved it. Um, even if I, you know, being from Nicaragua, being a, a Caribbean guy, uh, I love the cold and. I got to experience. Uh, I got to experience the coldest, uh, my coldest time so far, at least. You know, negative uh, 16 degrees in Chicago, and I was out there loving it, man. <laughs> uh, not also that, but it was fresh out of high school. I was with a group of friends playing soccer, doing what I love to do. It was uh, great times, great times. Uh, then back to Miami. What can I say about Miami? There's nothing bad to say about Miami. It's, you uh, love like, Miami. I still love Miami. Yeah. I, I honestly needed to get out. Needed, I was looking for something new, something different. How come? Um, uh, Miami, uh, it's uh, a little overpopulated right now. Uh, I love the beach. I love the city. But um, I felt like uh, in order to, for me to grow uh, and to get to where I'm at right now, I needed to uh, get out of my comfort zone. I was feeling too comfortable in Miami. I was, you know, to the point that I wasn't, I wasn't exceeding anymore. I wasn't, I wasn't. I almost like I stopped growing. I was I just got stuck a little bit, and I was just in that same level. So I just you know felt the need to uh, to you know to get new challenges in life, you know, and uh, and you know, and this is it. <laughs> we just got a uh, DM on IG, and guys, hit us up with Instagram. You can DM me if you have questions, comments, anything you want to relay to Nilo. What does it say? Um, what does it say? He says, uh, Jerry, it's Chris Long, um, not the football player. Another Chris <laughs> Long in town. This is All Chris right. Long, and he says, it's not the football player. I want to emphasize that. <laughs> um, and he says, I have not heard of this restaurant. We're certainly going to try it. Does he have any recommendations for a first-timer that doesn't know Cuban food very well? Oh, man, That's a good I, question. You, you be the judge, man. I think the Cubano is uh, great. Sandwich, right? it's, a, it's a great yeah. first experience. Um, if you go with more than one person, I uh, suggest the Cuban sandwich and the pan con lechon, which is our pulled pork sandwich. Uh, we do cut them in half, so you know you can have two sandwiches. Um, uh, I, I, the way I like to eat, uh, it's uh, everything is shared. Yeah, sharing. Uh, Cuban sandwich is huge. Sharing is caring. Actually, yeah. all our sandwiches are a pretty decent size. Uh, uh, so if you go, even if you go by yourself or you go with a couple of people, you know, try to try uh, getting a couple of different things. The queso frito is amazing. Uh, the pan con lechon, the cubano, get a couple of different things, share everything. The tostones rellenos, which are plantain cups, stuff with meat. Um, you know, just a couple of suggestions. Get the cubano, get the queso frito. Uh, try our freshly squeezed slime. We squeeze slimes on the daily there. It's as fresh as it gets. Uh, we also have a couple Mexican sodas, you know, made with uh, cane sugar. I haven't made the comparison, but I hear uh, you can actually taste the difference from regular uh, soda and Mexican soda. So, you know, um, those are just a very, uh, some of uh, the suggestions that I would do for, uh, for a first-timer. 
We got a question coming in. Talk to us about the Talk location. First, where is the location and why did you pick it? So it's on uh, 29th across the street from Lowe's. Woodbrook um, Shopping Center? Woodbrook Shopping Center, correct. Um, so we were actually uh, uh, scouting for locations uh, closer to the downtown mall area, to the UVA. You know, expensive, uh, huh? Yeah, it's a little yeah. expensive, yeah. yeah. Uh, and like I said, everything coming from out of pocket, it was a little out of range, you know. But um, we um, were having lunch at Al Carbone. Shout out to Al Carbone. Great place. They great, kill it. Great owners. Yeah, man. Great chicken. Um, we are just having lunch there, and we noticed that the place was uh, up for grabs next door. It was actually Al Carbone's old location. And um, originally, we were thinking about doing a food truck so we can be more mobile, more, we can attend different events and stuff like that. But uh, decided to uh, check that place out. It was the price was right, the the fields were right. It was just the perfect size to uh, start something like this. So we decided to go with that. And um, you know, after the after the transformation that we did, you know, all the decoration and all that, um, it just felt right. Uh, so we're happy to be in that location, and uh, I think it was a great start. I think it's totally a great start. Yeah, yeah. Even though, you know, a food truck is still, is still on the way. You still want to do it? Definitely, definitely, And yeah. then you would use the Woodbrook location kind of as like a, a commissary or like an epicenter? Definitely, yeah. Prepare the food there, Prefer load the it on the truck. truck, and off we go. That would crush. Yeah, man, that's that the goal. That would legitimately that's, crush it. Yeah, yeah. Um, we got a lot. Oh, nice with the photos right there, Tolber. I love what you're doing right now. He's showing photos of your yeah. dining room oh, right man. now. I love that, Harris Tolber. You went uh, beyond yeah. the call of duty there. There's our meals right there, dude. Yes. Talk to us about what we're seeing on screen right there. Nice So I uh, saw uh, Colombian street food. Sorry. Um, you know, it's just uh, roasted corn cooked with uh, with cheese. Poor people's mac and cheese. That's what I've heard people calling it. Um, it's just, you know, roasted so corn good. with melted cheese. You that was my wife's favorite aspect of the meal. Really? Yeah. Nice. And she loved everything. Nice, everything nice. she said, I asked, how would you grade it? I say, everything is 95 and above. But nice. this is my favorite aspect. I like that. Yeah, yeah. so um, that's usually what you get on a food truck, uh, you know. Past midnight down in Miami, you know, the, uh, the food truck uh, culture is, is pretty big over there. And um, that's something that you would get after uh, a long day of work if you work that night shift or that graveyard shift even. Or if you're, you know, out there partying Miami Beach and all like that. Um, it's a great, like... You like to party? Uh, I used to be. I used to be in that, in that scene, man. But yeah. then I got a little bit serious, you know. I got, I got focused on... <laughs> On my passion, but but hey, man, if you're in Miami, you know you it's, almost it's, have it's, to, right? It's it's like yeah, it's like you just have to, man. It's, it's, uh, it's at least part of the, the city. It's part of the city, man. It's part of who we are, man. We like to party. <laughs> Gerard Smith, welcome to the show, man. He's running for Almore County Board of Supervisors. He's a guy that I would consider uh, voting for, undoubtedly. Janice uh, Trevilian, thank you for watching. She says, I tried uh, the restaurant this weekend. It is so so. Good. Yeah, good. Um, I love like to it. hear that. I got a, yeah, yeah. another DM happy, happy. coming so in. <laughs> this DM is coming in. This is from Rob Lawson. Um, what would you? What's the perspective that you would give to someone who's thinking about opening up their own restaurant and they don't have a lot of money? Oh, That's a man. good question. Uh, honestly, um, if you if you do it the right way, you uh, you don't really need that much money. Um, um, I mean, you've been to my restaurant, for whoever has been to our restaurant already, everything that you see in the restaurants from the tables, the chairs, the benches, decoration, everything's been created by us. These two hands made about 90% of our restaurant, so you don't really need to spend a lot of money and, and tables, chairs, get as creative as possible, be open-minded, um, you know, just follow your dreams. Everything that's in your head, make it a reality, you know, put, put, put your two hands to work and, uh, and just go for it. Um, doesn't really take much. It just takes hard work and dedication, man. Um, let me throw this to you here. Growing up in Nicaragua, yes. um, tough times. Definitely. Now you're a business owner, a businessman and a restaurateur. <laughs> Still kind of surreal, man. I mean, do you pinch yourself, dude? <laughs> uh, it's never amazing, thought, right? Never thought I would get to where I'm at today, and I'm so grateful, you know, for all the experiences I've had in life and who made me, you know, who I am today and got me here and just never thought I'll, open, I'll be open in a restaurant. 16-year-old me, 10-year-old me, you know, uh, out there just bawling, you know, playing some soccer, you know, skipping school just to play some soccer with some friends and all that. Never, ever thought I would be opening my own restaurant, you know. With my brother, uh, it's a great feeling. You're getting some uh, knowledge here. So Laura Foner, who's a good friend of the program, okay. and she says she is the executive chef and soon-to-be owner at Dooner's Restaurant on Ivy Road. Okay. She's a baller. 
like super baller. She's been working there at Laura. Is it 19 years, I think, at Dooners? She says the crepe place that went out of business on Water Street okay. downtown yeah. is selling their super nice food trailer well, for $3,500. Right, we're done here. I'm going over there. <laughs> $3,500 for <laughs> that a food is trailer. Not That's not, not bad, right? Uh, not at all. We've actually uh, had our eye on a couple of food trucks already, but uh, the price just wasn't right. We we're trying to work that out, but... That is sounding like a deal to me. That, and that's what I love about Charlottesville. Let me throw this to you. Is like, do you feel like people are like quick to help and support oh, and give man, you love? It's been amazing. Um, not to uh, throw some dirt on Miami, but uh, in Miami being so overpopulated, you know, people usually don't have time to, you know, how can I say this, uh, stop and smell the flowers, you know? Sure. There's no time to uh, say good morning, how are you? There's uh, no time for that. And respect, you know, uh, hustlers in Miami, you know, everything is so fast-paced that people often forget uh, the little things in life. And honestly, uh, when I moved here, I didn't expect uh, to get that much support and help from everybody from uh, the county department, the city, uh, all the permits that we got. Everybody has been so helpful uh, and... You know, to be honest, I didn't think it was going to be this easy. Uh, I thought it was going to be a, a little tougher than that, but everybody's been so helpful, so supportive, uh, whether it's just showing up at my restaurant and buying our food to, uh, you know, um, getting permits done and people just showing up, donating things. I had this guy, um, I have three license plates on, on the wall from Florida, antiques, and some guy came and he just told me, oh, I have like a bunch of uh, old license plates from Florida. He's actually uh, a Florida uh, transplant, and he's like, he's like, oh, my God, that's amazing. Uh, he had some food. 30 minutes later, uh, he came. He showed up with all the license plates. So, you know, um, the support people give here, it's, uh, it's, you know, outstanding, out of this world. I'm so grateful to, to, have, to have people that actually care and want to support the uh, local business, you know? I love it. Um, we got another question coming in that's a good one. Do you have plans for an ABC license? Definitely, yeah. So, um, unfortunately, my, my brother um, works in the liquor industry, and there is a Virginia law. Um, still not, um, still don't understand fully the law, but uh, if you work with, uh, in the alcohol industry, you can own a restaurant. If you you can own a restaurant that sells alcohol if you work in the alcohol industry. And my brother uh, works for Wine Bowl down in Richmond, so uh, we've been having some troubles there. But uh, in the works, in the works, uh, I want to I want to give it like another two months until we get at least the beer and wine. You know, it's a good start. And then, what are your plans eventually? Uh... Uh, full liquor. Uh, we don't want to do like a full bar. Uh, I don't think it goes with our concept, but we definitely want to have like a. Like a four or five cocktail list, you know, with the essentials, mojitos, uh, Cuba Libres, which are rum and cokes, yeah. uh, you know, Love margaritas and piña coladas, you oh, know, keeping it simple, name, but, dude. you know, uh, uh, things that, you know, that go well with the concept, you know, so uh, definitely in the works. Is this, this is your homie right here? Hold on one second. Re, re, yes, sir. He's actually coming through um, soon. Hopefully, by the end of the week, he's gonna be helping me out a little bit. Riri's giving yeah, you yeah. some props right now. Re, Laura re. Foner says she's been at Dooners for 16. Abby says she wants some tequila. <laughs> uh, I want some tequila too. Aaron Slow <laughs> is watching the show. Thank you, Aaron, for joining us. Thank you, uh, thank you. Aaron. Give the show a like. Give it a share. The show is blowing up right now. Nice, Larry nice, Rhodes, man. what up? I'm feeling what up, the love. Larry Rhodes? I'm, I'm feeling the love. Dan man. Barnes is giving you some props. Bill Granford in Charlottesville is giving you some props. Jeremy Stanwick, Meg Taylor. Chris Turner, give the show a like, give it a share, guys, um, and it puts the restaurant in perspective. I mean, let me throw this to you here. Talk to us about, like, I mean, are you, and I know you're a humble guy. It's very clear you're very humble, <laughs> but are you, like, in some ways, like, an inspiration to a lot of folks in your family? Uh, I hope I am, you know. Um, you and Harvey? Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, what you see in uh, my brother and I is uh, all five of us are just the same, you know. And like I said, it's the, it's the, it's the way that we were raised. Uh, my dad was uh, a little tough on us, but for a reason, you know. Uh, and it's and it paid off. Uh, back when I was like six or seven, you know, and my dad was being so strict, you know. At some point, I was like, well, what, what's, what's same the with my what, family? What's the dude? problem? You know? I know. <laughs> but I look but back on it now, and I'm like, if it wasn't man. for like this hard nose, like. Dude, sometimes it was like, and this is, I think, part of some of the Latin culture. It's like, sometimes you step out of line, it's like, you know, it's the belt. Yeah, totally. Did yeah. you? Oh, and I got it. More yeah, than, I got the belt all the effing time, dude. <laughs> definitely, man, definitely. And, uh, <laughs> and you know, when you're a kid and you're getting spanked, you're like, you know. You're this sucks. Kinda, yeah, you know. Yeah. But, uh, but, and I've been actually thinking about it lately, you know, as we grow as a business, um, I, I, I like to, you know, 
think back to those times and uh, and realize that it all paid off, you know, and all, everything, you know, it all happened for a reason, you know. My dads were strict for a reason. Um, I, I, I feel like if they would have been a little more chill and if they were, would have tried to be that, that cool parent, maybe we wouldn't be here today and we, I could be, you know, in a completely different scenario and situation, you know, but... Um, um, thankfully, uh, I got spanked and I got, and they pulled my ears and, you know, and everything. And I got grounded so much that, uh, Same. that it, it's, it's showing today, you know, uh, it thankfully. sounds very similar. Our <laughs> upbringings right here. Yeah, now yeah. here's a tough question. And, uh, Harris, hit I'm going to, I'm going to work you it. into the interview here shortly. So get ready to go. Wendy Torres, uh, Bastillo says, I want some mojitos, baby. Oh, Jana says, try the coffee. It's the bomb. It um, is the bomb. Constance Wyatt, welcome. Thank you for joining us on the show. Give it a like. Give it a share. Here's the question I have for you is, you got raised like I got raised, which is like you step out of line, you feel the pain. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, when you, I have a 14-month-old. You've met him. When, yes. Do you have any kids? Not yet. Okay. Not yet. When you get a special lady and you have some children, are you going to raise them the same way? Most or is definitely. It gonna, oh, you most definitely. You will? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No doubt. Okay. Uh, Obviously, you know, I don't got kids right now, and my kid is my restaurant, and so, you know, I pretty much have a, a month and a two-week-year-old, you know? I know the feeling. But, yeah, right? Yeah. So this business is 11 years old in May. Nice. So I feel like whenever someone asks, do I have kids, I have an 11-year-old and a 14-month-old. <laughs> exactly, you know? And that's the way I like to think about it, but um, so I honestly don't have time to... Uh, think about a uh, baby, but you know it's always in the back of my head. Uh, you know, I, I've, I have I come from a big family uh, on my dad's side. My dad has eight brothers and eight siblings. You know, and just on my dad's side, it's uh, 32 cousins in total. So um, kids is definitely an option uh, for me um, whenever I do get time and get down to it. Uh, but they will definitely get the same treatment as I did. Um, I might even think about just going back to Nicaragua and raising him there, you know. Uh, it's definitely an option. I love it. I yeah, love it. Yeah, Bessie, man. is your sister watching Bessie in Nicaragua? Bessie is my sister. She's Bessie. watching Nicaragua? Uh, yeah, yeah. She actually lives in Nicaragua She still. says, I am so proud of you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, she's uh, like my second mom. You know? I love it. I love it. Fernando's giving you some props right here. Uh, yeah, Rodrigo's so giving you some props right here. I mean, the feet is flowing up over here. Yeah, uh, yes, sir. So pulperias are just like little... Um, Little holes in the wall, but back in Nicaragua, so that's taking me back, man. It's taking me back. I love it. Give it a like. Give it a share. Harris Tolber, you ready to lock and load? Harris Tolber's our director. Give us some perspective, my friend. The show is yours, sir. Yeah, Jerry, I've, I've loved this story so far. I've loved hearing about uh, this new restaurant and, and y'all's journey. You. you know, um, I love the positive energy that's on set today. Um, that's what we're all about, man. That's yeah, what we're exactly. All about. Y'all are all about spreading love, and it's clear that, you know, you and your brother have some real life experience just like different experiences in different places different cultures course, and the fact yeah. that y'all have come so far and just like join join you know join together as brothers to to make this happen it's it's really inspiring i love it Appreciate and that, man. Yeah. Uh, the food sounds delicious so i'm really excited to come and try, go it try it out man definitely yeah. we'll take care of you for sure you're getting props right now from uh is this uh family sebastian yeah Man. Yeah, That's my brother. Yeah, he He's actually saying Miami came. represent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he actually came up from Miami to help with the opening. Um, he had to go back, you know. He's got his whole life going on down there, but uh, but yeah, he was uh, also very supportive. He's actually the one that takes care of his social media. So any pictures that you see on our Instagram, Facebook, he's the one that takes care of it all the way down there. Uh, you know, we we keep in touch on the daily. We stay up to date, even you know, so a thousand miles away. You know, we're getting the question: Where in Nicaragua are you from? Uh, I'm from Managua. Um, parents are from Leon, but raised in Bluefields, so it's on the coast. But yes, I am from Managua, from the capital. Do you, uh, with the food truck, another question coming in, with the food truck, how is this going to help expand the brand and the business, do you think? Uh, well, That's a good question. Yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, well, I know there is, I uh, haven't been yet, but uh, I know there's a uh, farmer's market every every weekend uh, down here. I got On here Saturdays. in this Got here in December, so I know that was shut down for the winter, but uh, I don't know if it's, uh, it started back up again. It has. Oh, it has? Yeah. Cool, cool. Uh, this well. would crush it there. Yeah, you know, so little things like that. We uh, uh, And not only that, but catering services, private events, public events. We want to be able to provide our food everywhere we can, so I think the food truck could be... Uh, definitely, you know, uh, it could definitely help, uh, you know, expand the business and 
you know, just be anywhere we can. We got another. This is coming in on uh, IG. We're saying, do you have aspirations of opening a second location? Definitely. Seems no, like definitely. more than one Cuban restaurant would kill it in Charlottesville. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. agree. Yeah, yeah, totally. So, um, wow, we, people are responding <laughs> well here. Good, dude. good. I love it, man. I love it. I, I'm feeling the love. Um, yeah, um, obviously, uh, we're at Woodbrook Shopping Center. Um, we got a lease for now for two years. So, uh, we're going to be there for the next two years. Food trucks still in the works. Hopefully, that comes in the next year or so. But yeah, why not? Uh, the sky is the limit, man. So, two, three, you name it, you know? We're, we're going to be everywhere. How do you do? You're a courageous guy, you're an entrepreneur. Um, you're a confident guy. You're humble, but you're confident. Um, talk to us of how you, the advice that you give to aspiring restaurateurs and entrepreneurs, how you manage vulnerability and fear. Oh, because man. we know being like, okay, you were a, a scholarship soccer player. Yes. You broke a toe, lost your scholarship. Yeah. Then you went from Miami. You started a business with some friends. Yes. Came to Charlottesville with your brother. Didn't really Except, know anyone, and nah, you're home. I still don't. Because so, you're, you're grinding come, come at the Come through, restaurant. say what's up. Come yeah. through and say what's up. So talk to us of how you manage, like, vulnerability and fear. Man, it's all about uh, taking risk. Uh, you know, I, I feel like that's what life is all about, you know, getting out of your comfort zone. Um, you fear what you don't know, you know, as people say. So uh, I just encourage What do you people. fear? <sighs> Honestly, man, uh, I don't fear anything anymore. Uh, my only fear was failure. Yeah. And in this month and two weeks that we've been open, I've seen nothing but positive feedback and support and love from the Charlottesville community. So I'm, I'm, I'm way past my fears, man. I love that I'm answer. I'm way past right my fears. Tober, you love that answer? Oh, man. That, yeah, yeah, that so, answer is so freaking yeah, inspiring. Yeah. Once you get out of that comfort zone and, and you see what life is all about, taking risks, going for it, you know, uh, making your dreams come true, making them a reality, I feel like fear is no longer an option. You strike me as a guy, and we have a similar mindset where it's like maybe like our biggest fear is having regrets. Definitely, yeah. And uh, like not willing to do something because of fear of like of not fear trying. Of not trying, exactly, man. So. What better way to get over that than to just do it, you know? So, Do you guys, like, do this where you're like, all right, we're going to give it a try. We're going to throw it against the wall. If it sticks and people like it, we keep doing it. Keep if it people don't, we change. Exactly, and that's how it is. That's how, uh, how we've been doing it now. Uh, thankfully, all the items on our menu have been a hit. Um, we're, we wanted to give it about a month or two to see what item uh, didn't really sell so we can take it off or maybe uh, tweak it a little bit. But uh, thankfully, everything's been, uh, everything's been selling, so... Um, now we just need to keep adding more things, you know? <laughs> what is your and Harvey's day-to-day -day like? Uh, so Harvey's his brother, co-owner in the restaurant. Co-owner of the restaurant. He's got that 9 to 5 down in Richmond, so he's at the shop on the weekends. Uh, so uh, no days off, you know? Uh, we're open seven days a week. I'm there from opening to close. Um, once we close the doors and we clean, we prep, we go back home and we enjoy some quality family time. Uh, Harvey's got a... a a year old, he's going to be two uh, next month. So You guys uh, live together? Uh, at the moment, yeah. Okay. I'm actually crashing at his house cool. until uh, I get on, you know, on my feet. You know, uh, like I said, everything out of pocket. So uh, crashing at his house for Love now that. until we pick up and I can actually get my own spot. But, you know, um, you know we've been raised uh, as a pretty close family. So whenever, you know, we travel, we, you know. It's uh, like you said a, you had seven of you guys in it's, uh, Miami. It's five of us plus my parents, so it's right. uh, it's five siblings. In it's Miami, at, at in, in Miami, in a two bedroom apartment. Uh, that's how we started. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, that's how we started. Now uh, everything spread out. My sister Bessie is back in Nicaragua. Uh, my sister, uh, my other sister, you know, got her kid, got her life going on. So uh, um, now we're all spread up, but not too far. You know, we we keep you know we keep the distance you know fairly close. Uh, you know, just like how we were raised, you know, it's a pretty close family. But um, no, but yeah, that's that's the way that we started. Um, and everywhere we move, this it's always how we start. You know, start from small, uh, and you know, just grow. You know, as we go. How long, Zachary Parks, Greg? Welcome to the program. Thank welcome, you for joining welcome. us. We appreciate you guys. Have tried the restaurant? It's freaking banging. I, I I highly, highly, highly encourage you to give this restaurant a whirl. How far is a flight, or how long is a flight? From Charlottesville to Nicaragua. Um, so How much so, does it cost, too? Uh, so, honestly, I don't know a direct flight from Charlottesville to Nicaragua. Uh -huh. I know on Miami uh, to Nicaragua, it's, uh, if you get it at the right time, it could be as slow as $175, $200. Get out. Definitely. And, you know, get it two, three weeks uh, before your flight, and you can pay 
four hundred dollars, which is still not a bad. No, uh, four hundred is not all. bad. I thought not it was a lot all. more. Nah, nah, man. Yeah, yeah. I've I've flown to Nicaragua, um, you know, with Spirit Airlines, which is you know, shout out to Spirit Airlines, but uh, uh, Basic Airline, you can fly as for as low as eighty dollars, man. Yeah, it's amazing. so definitely, yeah, yeah, and I recommend visiting Nicaragua. You know, um, I was going to ask you about country. that. You're much more well traveled than I am. You know, okay. I've been for 11 years. I've been grinding in this business. Really? Yeah, I've taken one vacation, Man. my honeymoon with my wife. We came back. She came back pregnant. Oh, okay, nice. so, so then we had another man. baby. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So where I'm going with this is educate me on Nicaragua today. Nicaragua, man, beautiful country. Um, not very well known since. You know, Central America is not really like a hotspot destination up until a couple of years ago when uh, people just decided to start traveling there and they started realizing how beautiful of a country it is. Uh, the land of lakes and volcanoes. There's over eight different volcanoes. There are over eight volcanoes in Nicaragua that you can visit, go into the actual crater, look at the lava. You can zip line. Uh, there's the beach side. There is... Um, rainforest there's a little bit of everything uh, it's uh, overall a beautiful country so fun fact i'm actually i was actually born in costa rica which i represent both proudly and another beautiful country is so you're well like, traveled dude yeah yeah you know? you're like a cultured man <laughs> yeah, seriously definitely yeah uh and you know both countries i feel like they could just combine and be one country even you know both very beautiful a lot to offer and not uh, well known so uh where for, for whoever's watching and like to travel, visit Nicaragua, man. What are some similarities? This might be a tough question. What are some similarities between Nicaragua, Costa Rica, Cuba, and Miami? Because I feel like all four have had tremendous influence on you. Definitely, yeah. And uh, all have uh, the similarities of the culture. Uh, even though uh, it's four completely different countries, uh, uh, there's, uh, there's a culture... Uh, that sticks to all of them, and it's the Latino culture. Um, whether you're from Nicaragua or Costa Rica, you're from Peru, you're Colombian, uh, I feel like all Latinos are kind of like come together into this one thing that makes us all Latinos, and it's, and I guess it's the faja, you know, the pao pao that you get when you're a little kid, you know, uh, definitely has a lot of influence, but, um, but yeah, you know, uh, all countries are to each they're their own countries but at the same time they just have so much uh, uh love to to give you know uh and uh, the love um of the country itself you know everybody who are a nicaraguan you will never hear a nicaraguan complain about nicaragua a nicaraguan loves this country to death uh you know and, and the the pride that each country has on its own you know it just shows a lot and uh, me being a, a little have been you know culture and in all different countries, you know, uh, that's the one thing, uh, the love for the country, you know, the, the motherland, you know, that's the one thing that I've seen, that I've experienced in every country. It's the love for the country, man. I love it. Jonathan Galasso says, uh, your energy is contagious. Is thank that you, uh, you. is that the coffee or is that natural? <laughs> <laughs> that's a good question, uh, it's too. It's a little bit of the coffee. It's mostly <laughs> natural, but the coffee has a little influence in it, for sure. <laughs> I love it. Harris Tolber, we're going to throw it to you here, sir. The question, what did you learn in the interview? And then we'll close with Nilo with the sizzle reel. The, the close we're going to do with you is we're going to put the shirt on the wall of fame. I'm going to bring an item off the wall of fame to talk about. Um, and then I'm going to give you an opportunity to, again, let folks know why they should try the restaurant. Definitely. So first, Harris Tolber, what did you learn today, sir? Yeah, um, well, I, I learned a lot about just facing your fears, just taking your life in your own hands, taking risks. You know, I love that type <laughs> of stuff. I, I'm very into, like, uh, motivational speaking and stuff. And, like, I mean, <laughs> you, you clearly have that built into your blood i mean <laughs> sure, so, so that's really that. awesome and that's you know thank you thank you i really love this interview it's been it's been eye-opening yeah it's been great <laughs> i i <laughs> agree you, harris tolber um, um let's do this before we close with you we're gonna sure. add the shirt to the wall of fame for sure i love the branding talk to me about the logo uh made up concept by i had an idea in mind it's but uh, yes um uh, but i couldn't you know i couldn't i couldn't put it into you know, into a paper. So went over to High Tech Designs. Hi, shout out to High Techs and Kristen who came up with the design. She put my ideas into a sign and a logo. Who uh, we read proudly, you know. Um, but you know, that's all my ideas. 
uh, and uh, Kristen's skills on the computer. I love it. I love it. Let me throw this to you here. Um, one of the things I want to highlight is just quickly the dining room. Also dining your room, vision. Yes. I mean, you go into the dining room, you see some, and I don't want to misspeak here, but you see some yeah. reclaimed wood. Totally. You see the three-dimensional lettering on the wall. Yes. You see this, like, very tranquil and peaceful and, like, welcoming blue paint. You see just, like, this approachable, like, chill vibes, like, nice, positive energy restaurant. Yes. Talk to me about that. So, you know, um, I, I like to be hands-on. I like to create things, you know, trial and error is what I like to do. I like to create things, you know, but... Um, that's that's how the whole dining room came up, you know. Bought some chairs. I didn't like the color. Sat them down, stained them. Came up with the chairs that you see today. Tables. I just bought some used wood, cut them, painted them, made a design, threw uh, some epoxy, some resin on it. Boom, we got tables, benches. You know, got three center blocks. Got a piece of wood. Stick it in the middle. Put some cushion. You know, uh, creativity, man, creativity. I love it. I love it. About. Victor Ram says, I'm going to fly out for Miami. We need a <laughs> Miami discount when eating there. We're going to close with Nilo here shortly. Before we do that, we're going to tell a quick story about the Wall of Fame. You know what? Why don't we tell the story, Harris Tolber? Ooh, this is a good one. Um, Hannah Dobbles, who we had on the program. Hannah Dobbles is another successful entrepreneur. She owns the Bar Studio on Water Street. It's a workout studio. Right. Um, this is her water bottle here that she left on our wall of fame. She started this a handful of years ago. She had a dream, willingness to work hard, and a little bit of money. And she opened up a, a fitness studio on Water Street. Today she has a location in Chapel Hill, a lo North Carolina, a location in Crozet, her flagship here in Charlottesville, who she has sold a part of to somebody else. Now she's building kind of a franchise model where she's trying to do bar studios across the country. She has a fitness app that's coming out. She epitomizes what Nilo epitomizes, the willingness to work hard, to take a chance, and the willingness to pursue your dreams. So Hannah Dobbles, we salute you. We salute your bar brand respect. and everything that you have done. Tremendous respect because we know firsthand how hard it is to build a business. Um, and it ain't no easy task. And I totally agree with what you said. I look at this business as my 11-year-old son or my 11-year-old daughter, and I look at my, my, my blood son as my 14-month-old. Definitely. Yeah. Um, so we have that respect. This is what I like to do, and we'll create a sizzle reel here for, for the family. Engage with this camera here and let everybody know why they should try your restaurant and what they can expect. Sure. So um, Wajita's Miami Eatery, it's uh, down-to-earth, good vibes, good food. Uh, good customer service. Come try out 1871 Seminole Trail. Nothing but good vibes. Um, we're here starting. This is number one out of many. Uh, just trying to provide, get a little ray of the sunshine state in every major city, you know? I love that. I love this interview. Love everything about it. Thank you very much. You for crushed it. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Um, guys, thank you, thank it's the you. I Love Seville show Monday through Friday on the I Love Seville network, 1230 to 130. We have uh, shows on Wednesday at 3 o'clock, Thursday at 3 o'clock, and Friday at 1015 for some other concept and some other niches on our network. We're literally trying to build a network here where we spotlight the positivity and the good vibes that are in Charlottesville and Central Virginia. We close the program the same way every single time, and we encourage folks to embody the golden rule. I'm not making this about religion. I am making this about treating others how you want to be treated yourself. If you treat mm -hmm. others how you want to be treated yourself, it will have a positive viral impact throughout our community. Charlottesville needs that more than ever. Just open the door for somebody, pick up some trash, let someone go ahead of you at a red light. Yes, sir, no, sir. Smile to somebody. Be nice. The golden rule. Um, for Harris Tolber, Judah Wickhauer, Lauren Linsky, this is the I Love Seville Show. My name is Jerry Miller. We will see you tomorrow at 1230 with Joe Thomas, a radio and television broadcaster, joining us on the program. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Dude, crush it. Thank you, man. Seriously. Thank you. For real. Respect. Respect. Thank, Respect. You. Thank, uh, thank you very much. Our pleasure. One more thing. We just got to get the photo. For sure. the photos for the website. Yeah. For sure. And then we'll pump it for uh, about 45 days. Harris, good work. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, guys.